It's just simply to watch the game. So each of you should be assigned a group. Uh, there is a group leader that is in charge of your three or four people, however many you've got. Before the game starts, so we're going to set it up as a 6 v 6 game. Your job is to organize your crew to carry out the assessment of whatever you've been assigned to look at. So 9, 10, 11, and 12, you're dealing more with the style pieces. You've got more, um, what do we think about this? How are we seeing this? Groups one through eight, you're basically just collecting data. And I think I asked group six and group eight then to take the idea of, of data and turn it into a practice game. So whoever's in group six, do we have a leader in group six who's present? Check the cheat sheet. What up? What up, dude? I'm in group one. I don't even see Abla. So we have group six. Anybody from group six or group eight, you are now in charge. <laughs> so if your name is listed on group six and group eight, what you're going to do after we watch the kids play for a while is training activity based on one of the elements that you select from your table. How many of you have taken a federation course in 2018? Alright, so the first part of this is basically just a roadmap kind of a concept. The objective of the game is to get from that goal to that goal and score, or if they've got the ball somehow between there and there, regain the ball so we can score. So in terms of the, the federation roadmap, the first part of this is really just simply that. How do we do from getting from one part of the field to the other or defending? I've got it broken in halves rather than thirds. Um, so, somebody, can you summarize what you think is going on in the next half hour to 40 minutes? Observe it. Okay, with the purpose of? Creating a plan. Based on? Based on data. Good, observations of the game. So each of the groups is different except 9, 10, 11, and 12. And the only other thing we have to do is figure out which one is team A and which one is team B. So I'm going to designate the team that's coming from that goal forward as team A, and team B is the team that's going that way. So it will either ask you to look at a team, it will ask you to look at a specific player within a team, A or B, or I think it will ask you to look at both goalkeepers. Um, I had originally thought about this as 5v5 or 6v6. We've got 12 kids. So the organization is going to be two in the back, two in the middle, and one in the front. I'm also going to put a deeper offside line in so we can open up the game. So the offside is not going to be at the halfway line. It's going to be a little bit longer so there's a chance to open up the game. Uh, let me think of anything else we need to know before we start. And we're still on time. So just, um, here's a thought. When we get to the second part, we've talked about the data. If we're starting to pick up time, the next most sensible thing to do is say, why don't your group present something as well? So the thought is, I'm going to watch kids. Where do they have seemingly strengths, given the time we're watching them? Where do they have holes in their game, whatever those holes may be? How do we take those and put them into game-like activities? So for those of you in group six and group eight, if it's a drill, don't even start, because it's going to get one of these. <laughs> So the objective is how can we train soccer in soccer games? How many of us grew up with no coaches as kids, no adults as kids, and played on the street? Okay, so for those of us who come from that soccer background, nobody was telling us what to do. Sometimes we could have used some help, but probably we were better off having limited help rather than too much, which is what the problem is a lot of kids. So the present today, is we can teach everything on this sheet of paper. We can teach it in a game. We can put it in some kind of game where it's competitive, where there's two teams, where there's attacking, defending, and transition. And we can make a game of it. The only thing that might make it different is what we coach. So it's a simple thought that the group six and group eight, I'm not interested in putting on a drill. 
I'm interested in seeing how we translate. Let's just go to group six, see what's on the page. The staple came out, that ain't help. <laughs> group six, all right, so let's look at group six. So I got the idea of supporting away from the ball. That could be, depending on what we see, that could relate directly to positional responsibilities away from the ball, or it could relate directly to a concept about get away from it. The younger the kids, it's more about a concept. No kid will tend to do what those kids who were playing here before did. They need to learn how to do that. That's a concept. As we get to this kind of level, I'm assuming it's more about the concept within a game. So how you train that is gonna have a different look on the field. But try to think, how can I make this game-like to the point where I'm experiencing the game at the level I need to play at? So that's the, th the thought as we head beyond just the observation and we look at now how do we translate numbers into training activities. I'm also gonna say this. There are a million ways to coach this game and there's nothing off the table. I was with UH yesterday and guess what? It was, I'm gonna use the word drill. It was two people on the ball, it was one person and their mom or dad. There's a place for everything in this game depending on the level of player. So I do not even go to the point of, well, you can't do this and you can't do that. All I'm saying is that we don't do enough game play that teaches. We don't think about the concept of how we can use games that are more fun more active, et cetera, et cetera, less management on our part, we don't use those enough to teach. And I, I also have a sneaking suspicion that when I'm asking group one and group two to coach within the game, you simply set up the game and we coach within the game, that's a 5v5 or 6v6, whatever you want to do at the end. We don't necessarily do enough coaching within the game form because I'm just going to make a blanket statement. A lot of people who watch the game don't see what there's they're seeing so they don't know what they're looking for there's a game going on and they just the head follows the ball but they're not looking at the shape of the team where's the roles within the team what can i take out which is the whole point of the workshop today so the group one and group two will go second i'm necessarily asking you coach within 5v5 6v6 because i think as a, as a, a community of coaches we tend to do a lot of drills. We tend to do a lot of little concept games and we tend to get to the point where the game is organized and positioned. We all do this. Guilty as sin. <laughs> as a coach. I was a PE teacher by profession. We got to that point, I did this. Oh, I've done my job. I've gotten all the drills out of the way. And at some point I realized this is where the game starts and I've, I've just, I'm not doing my job because the players don't understand how the game works. So that's, you're seeing a snippet of this. You're not, seeing it in any way that will give you more than just a taste and you can take from it what you will but that's sort of the idea for the two hours you watch the game you try to analyze what's in the game you try to develop training activities and i'm just narrowing the focus to like, something that's games uh, and then we'll do some coaching within the game and you can take the information do what you will doug said to me i think i said this this is literally hot off the presses um I just literally put this together for this event. So if, if it was something, I had a real tough time actually when I was talking about an idea like support in the group, and it may be group six. When I looked at support, it wasn't clean enough to say, is somebody supporting around the ball? So I literally defined it in terms of a six or an eight supporting the buildup. So I defined it in a way that we could put a number on it, we could identify a particular situation as opposed to Oh, I'm making a judgment about somebody's support and position. Yeah, okay, so there's little things like that that you may find need a little bit of massaging and I'm more than happy to, to change this because I'm on another whole theme of, of how this kind of a clinic works. So if you find something in your analysis that doesn't work particularly well, I get it. <laughs> I'll take responsibility for it. You can at least see where I'm trying to go with it. So everything should be able to have a number attached to it in terms of potential attempts, successes, or simply just numbers. One of the things I ask you to do is look at the players and say, how many of them are using different surfaces of the foot? And I think I've just narrowed you down at four. So what does that tell us? Do we have a group of kids who use the inside and the outside, or are they all playing like this? Well, that's good information to have, because if you think about 
being able to use different surfaces, the first thing we've got to know is where are these kids? So I'm asking one of you to just simply get into the nuts and bolts. What surfaces are these kids using? Where's their tendencies? How does that impact their ability to solve problems and be skillful as opposed to just that's what we teach for passing because clearly that's a problem. Okay. Any questions? Because I think I'm in good shape. Let's get started because I'm going to wing it a little bit as we go. Any questions from anybody? All right, who's group one? Right here. Uh, What's your name? Waza. Okay. Waza, group one right here. Group two. Group seven. What up, dude? How you doing? Good to see you, man. Good to see you.